I want you to take a long, hard look at the people you surround yourself with. You can't expect to become a millionaire when you're hanging out with drug addicts. You cannot expect to become the absolute highest level version of yourself if you surround yourself with people that never want to see you do better than them. Wake the fuck up. The goals that you want to achieve in your life are your fucking goals and nobody else's. Hundreds of people give up on their goals on a daily basis. And it's usually because they realized quickly after starting their journeys that they're alone. Nobody's waking them up in the morning. Nobody's pushing them when they start to make excuses. And nobody's patting them on the back when they hit a milestone. So whatever you want to achieve in life, maybe it's losing a certain amount of weight to become the best version of yourself. Maybe it's building a business to provide financial freedom for your family and to travel the world. Or maybe it's just being a better father, mother, or partner for your spouse. Whatever it is, it's all on you. And the quicker you realize that nobody's going to come and hold your fucking hand through life, through this journey, the faster you will start to see success. Stop relying on outside sources of inspiration, motivation, and support to fucking get you there. Put your goddamn head down and take charge of your fucking life. And this shit's gonna mess with your head, but sometimes this means you need to let go of the people that you think are your closest friends. This means you might have to let go of the people that are the closest family members to you. You might have to let go of your mom, or your dad, or your brothers, or your sisters, or that best friend you've had since first grade. They might not be bad people, but you need to understand that some people just aren't meant to be in your life long term. They're not meant to help you get to the highest level of yourself. If every time you go to better yourself, somebody hits you with a line like, why would you want to do that? You need to find another fucking social circle. You need to make a shift and surround yourself with people that challenge you to grow. You got to surround yourself with lions. You got to surround yourself with fucking wolves. With people that are going to push you to be the absolute best fucking version of yourself. The people are going to push you to your absolute fucking breaking point. Because you can only grow when you're uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but I would much rather be a unique fucking wolf in a field full of sheep than a sheep blending in with the others. If it's important to you, you're going to find a way. You won't have to look for a resource. You will become resourceful. It's not always about the accomplishment. It's about the effort. If we can just keep the effort going, the excuse is irrelevant. You gotta be stronger than your excuses. Excuses don't get results. Now we've gotta go through the process of being stronger than our excuses. We get one opportunity to come this way. We get one shot, we got one life to live. Life is too short to make excuses. Truth is, everybody's got purpose. Right? Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got something they have to pass or achieve or become. But we are generationally programmed to love convenience. And the truth of the matter is, it is so convenient to make an excuse. I want to give you just a few things that you can do to help you to stop making excuses. To help you to stop habitually gravitating to the place called convenience. If you can hear my voice, you've got work to do. You've got a destiny to fulfill. You've got a purpose to walk into. You've got a test to pass. You've got dots to connect, rooms to walk in, stages to stand on, and tables to sit down on. We all want to do something. We all want to be somebody. We all want to go somewhere. And if, we're, if these things are going to happen, We've got to stop habitually gravitating to excuse. Number one, you gotta stop preparing yourself to everybody else. Rule number one, kill the comparison game. 
Oh, well, well, I don't, I don't do it like them, and I, I don't say it like them, and I don't, I'm not as tall as them, and I'm not as strong as them, and I, I don't have the money that they have, I don't have the resources that they have, I don't, well, the, the, the reason why I, I, I couldn't do it is because my parents weren't there for me, and the, the reason why I didn't get to go to college on a full ride because my coach, he didn't create the highlight reel for, for the sports scholarship, the, the reason why, and so we, we were just programmed to blame everybody else. When will you look in the mirror and stop comparing yourself to everybody else? We compare ourselves to the way people look. We compare our stories to their stories and our relationship to their relationship. Every single day, the excuses that we make are like a warm blanket pulled over us, covering up the underlining issue of fear, the spirit, the personality of fear. Truth is that the reason why you haven't done it is because you're afraid. Maybe if you could just listen to this a couple times, maybe you'll stop making so many excuses because the excuse is nothing but a cosmetic. It's makeup. It's a blanket. It's a convenience that we habitually gravitate to because it just makes us feel better. But the underlining issue, the underlining cancer, the inflammation is fear. We're afraid. We're afraid that if we give our best, the best isn't good enough. We're afraid because we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. We're afraid that we won't be seen. We're afraid that people will change if we evolve. We're afraid that maybe we'll lose our friends if we began to shift our thinking. You have to have a marriage mentality when it comes to achieving what it is that's on the inside of you. What it is that's in your head to manifest it and hold it in your hands. You have to have a marriage mentality. The problem with many of you is you keep dating the idea, the potential of focus and success and determination and discipline. You're only disciplined once a week. You're only determined twice a week. You're only, you're only enthusiastic about the journey on Sundays or Wednesdays. Once you make a covenant, you know what? I'm going to commit to this. You're going to put the blood. You're going to put the sweat. You're going to put the tears in. You're going to lose sleep. You're going to go days without eating. You're going to do whatever it takes to make the sacrifices necessary to manifest. There are too many people in your life who have left you. There are too many people in your life who have counted you out. There are too many people in your life who have whispered in your ear and said you'll be worse off without them. Prove them wrong. Keep loving those who have lied on you. Keep blessing those who have cursed you. Don't be bitter. Don't be frustrated. Listen, just remain faithful behind the scenes. Promotion is coming. Stages and opportunities are being prepared right now as you sacrifice in secret, as you put the work in in the dark room, as you do what is required to hold in your hand what you see in your head. Live your life like you're the hero in your movie. And right now, pretend you're in the part of the movie that starts and it shows you as a loser. If I got to fight to get you in the gym, that's a problem. I'm just saying, for real, some of you broke and you still entertained. I'm talking about those of you who are complaining about your job. You ain't got no money and you sitting here complaining about, but then you watching all the TV programs. I'm never going to feel like doing the things that are tough or difficult or uncertain or scary or new. So I need to stop waiting until I feel like it. We all have a habit of hesitating. The idea isn't going to execute itself. And, and the book isn't going to write itself. And the, the weights out in the gym, they're not going to move themselves. You have to do it and you have to do it now. But there's a motherfucker out there who wants what you have. Who wants the position you are? Who wants the job you have? Who wants the wife that you have? Or the husband? There's someone out there hungry and wants everything you can have. But if you're lazy, man, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to deal with you. You're going to make me feel dumber. You know, you're going to lower my level. I don't think so. The reason why you're so lazy is not because you don't have the ability. You're so lazy because your dream's so small. I believe in myself every day. I know I make mistakes. I know I'm not perfect. But I am not lazy. You could keep sleeping. I'm going to keep working. They say things like, I'll start Monday. 
it's not my fault. It's not fair. I'm too damn tired. Or my personal favorite, I don't have enough time. They have a loser mentality through and through. And until they recognize that the problem is them, they'll never improve. I know many talented people who had a great deal of potential, but they never realized their greatness and they will end up going to their grave with all their good stuff still in them. You will be tested. And how you face that test and how you overcome that test determines the rest of your life. You got to have something that is inside you, something that fires you up, something that drives you, something that gives you more power than you've ever had in your life. Your life comes down to your decisions. And if you change your decisions, you will change everything. The best of the best, they don't sleep. They keep working. But what are you going to do? Where do I start? And, and when's the best time to start? I have a very simple answer for that. Here and now. I got an opportunity to make a dream become a reality. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more plan. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. Get off the phone. Sorry, I'm not available until the end of this year. No, I'm for real. You reached the right number, but you called me at the wrong time. Call me back January 1st. I'm about to get busy now. Stop being this high school dropout. Stop giving up. Stop sleeping on the streets. Stop walking up and down Finkel Avenue like you ain't got nothing and get your GED. Stop being afraid to take a test. I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got to I got to breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. And until you get there, you will never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you the world is yours. So work hard and you can have whatever it is you want. And when I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0s, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. There are a lot of people that are sitting around waiting for something to happen. Now, what you gonna do about it? We're getting out of college and we haven't the faintest idea what we want to do. So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? What, how would you really enjoy spending your life? Well, it's so amazing as a result of our kind of educational system, crowds of students say, well, we'd like to be painters, we'd like to be poets, we'd like to be writers, but as everybody knows, you can't earn any money that way. Or another person says, well, I'd like to live an out-of-doors life and ride horses. I say, do you want to teach in a riding school? Then let's go through with it. What do you want to do? When we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that. And uh, forget the money. Uh, because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. And after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is you can eventually turn it, uh, you could eventually become a master of it. It's the only way to become a master of something, to be really with it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. So uh, don't, don't worry too much, uh, that's, uh, everybody's, uh, somebody's interested in everything. And anything you can be interested in, you'll find others who are. But it's absolutely stupid to spend your time doing things you don't like in order to go on spending things you don't like, doing things you don't like. Wake up from your dream and make your dream a reality. Wake up. Wake up and understand the significance of the purpose that you have within yourself. Understand that if it's something that you are truly ultimately seeking in your life, then you got to go after it.
There are a lot of people that are sitting around waiting for something to happen. Now, what you going to do about it? How are you going to go about doing the things that are necessary to get you where you need to be in your life? Everybody has a dream. But how much are you applying to that dream? How far are you pushing that dream? When are you going to realize that the dream is not going to work by itself? You got to have the ability to rise up and push yourself and believe in yourself and make that dream a reality. What's your why? I, if, hey, if I don't give y'all nothing else, you better start that. What's your why? You know why I do what I do and I do it so passionately? Because my grandfather was a high school dropout. My father was a high school dropout. I was a high school dropout. And we about to break the cycle. I do what I do so my son won't have to go through what I went through. When I was at the football game, my old dude wasn't with me. I saw other kids with they fought. I said, that'll never happen to me. I do what I do because my daughter says she's going to Harvard. It ain't even about y'all. I'm about to come here and blaze y'all. Why? Because I'm trying to get you all the NFL. I ain't about to miss this opportunity. This is the first NFL team I've ever done in my life, and I'm about to lick it. I'm about to give everything I got, and I will know if I don't get another gig, it won't have anything to do with the fact that I didn't put everything on the field. What's your why? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you put on that jersey? Why do you go out and practice? Why? I got to commit my very being to this thing. I got to I got to breathe it. I got to eat it. I got to sleep it. And until you get there, you will never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you the world is yours. So work hard and you can have whatever it is you want. I want to talk to someone out there who is thinking about quitting and giving up. This is for you. There are going to be times when you are down and you feel that you are alone. There are going to be times when darkness is going to blind you from your truth. But how much pain can you endure? Please, don't give up. Remember this. When it gets tough, you got to get a little tougher. Pain will push you beyond your threshold. Will remind you that you are still alive. You feel like you can't carry on. Your body is getting a little numb. Your muscles feel weakened. There are going to be some setbacks, but that doesn't mean you can't come back. Put yourself back together if you're down. Lift yourself up once again. Take a moment and just look up. I know that you feel like you're not strong enough right now. But I'm here to let you know. Anything that is in your way. You have the ability to move it out of your way. You wonder why is it hurting so bad? Because you've given so much of yourself. Maybe this pain wasn't my enemy. Maybe this pain was building me up. So when it gets tough, you get tougher. While it may be frightening, it will also be rewarding. So you got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. I found that nothing in life 
is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Fail big. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, and it can be, it can be very frightening. It, it's a new world out there. It's a mean world out there, and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances professionally. Don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. And they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Sometimes it's just to not curse somebody out. <laughs> Simple goals, but have goals. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you have already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and miss a few days. You have to work at it. Hard work works. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I don't care how much money you make, you can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. They got robbed. That's all they got. You can't take it with you. And it's not how much you have. It's what you do with what you have. We all have different talents. Some of you will be doctors, some lawyers, some scientists, some educators, some nurses, some preachers. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get from helping others, nothing's better than that. Well, one or two things, but nothing's better than that. Not, not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is. And anything you want good, you can have, so claim it, work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back, pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress.
Those times when you get up early and you work hard. Those times when you stay up late and you work hard. Those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. Um, that is actually the dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. And if you guys, if you guys can understand that, then what you'll see happen is that you won't accomplish your dreams. Your dreams won't come true. Um, something greater will. It's a, it's an amazing thing about passion. If you love something, if you have a strong passion for something, you would go to the extreme to try to understand or try to get it. Whatever you have a love for, if you have to walk, you would go get it. If you have to beg someone, you would go get it. I don't think you guys understand how present you guys were with me. You know, you guys were there with me at 5.30 in the morning when I was running the track and I was midway through my workout and I didn't know if I could make it through. And I thought about the expectations you guys have for me and you have for our team. And it pushed me through. It got me through those 800s and 400s and 100s at 5.30 in the morning. So I thank you. We're not on the stage just because of talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two-a-days or five-a-days. We're up here because we had a dream and let nothing stand in our way. If anything tried to bring us down, we used it to make us strong. We were never satisfied, never finished, will never be retired. My high school English teacher, Mr. Fisk, he had this beautiful quote and, he, and it read, rest at the end, not in the middle. And I took that to heart. I believe there's time for resting at the end, but for me, that time is not now. Thank you for this tremendous honor and acknowledging my basketball career, but I'm far from done. My next dream is to be honored one day for inspiring the next generation of athletes to have a dream, sacrifice for it, and never ever rest in the middle. Rest at the end, not in the middle. Be yourself. That's it. Be you. Be you. There's no gimmick. There's no... You don't have to contrive anything. Who are you? Where are you today? What is your story? Where does that come from? And uh, if you guys can understand that, then I'm doing my job as a father. Thank you guys so much. I love you. And, uh, Mamba out. Because if you, if you play with the fear, fear of failing, you'll have the pressure on yourself to play, you know, to capitulate to that fear. If you play with the sense of, I want to win, I want to win, then you have the fear of what happens if you don't. But if you find common ground in the middle, in the center, then it doesn't matter. You're unfazed by either, right? And that enables you to really just stay in the moment, stay connected to it, and not feel anything other than what's in front of you. So, you know, I try to just be dead center. You start with, what do you want your game to be? What would make your game most unstoppable or hard to deal with? And now you work backwards from there. And you start building it one piece at a time, one move at a time, one counter at a time. Who would Shaq be if he had your work ethic? He'd be the greatest of all time. If Shaq had your work, he'd be the greatest of all greatest time. Greatest of all time by sure. Mom. He uh, he'd be the first to tell you that for sure. I mean, this guy was a a force like I have never seen. I mean, it was crazy. You know, a guy at that size. Generally, guys at that size are a little timid and they don't want to be tall. They don't want to be big. Man, this dude was. He did not care. He was mean. He was nasty. He was competitive. He was vindictive. I mean, he was, yeah. I wish he was in the gym. I would have had 12 rings. He had the work ethic. Oh my God, yeah. We ain't be close. If you're lazy, man, I don't want to talk to you. I want to deal with you. You don't make me feel dumber. You know, you're going to lower my level. I don't think so. You can go over there. 
there's plenty of teams in here where you'll fit right in. <laughs> I, don't, I don't deal with people that don't commit at that level, but then act as if they do. I don't deal with that. I don't. It's real shit. I mean, I listen. So, like, we, we, we used to get into stuff all the time because it was like, you know, he would say, okay, Kobe's not throwing me the ball. And, you know, media would take it and run with it and all sort of stuff. And I'm like, well, bruh, if you were in shape, by the time I run down on a fast break and run back and then run down, you're still coming down the first time, bruh. Like, what the hell do you want me to do? Right? So a lot of our contention came, came from, from that. that. Came from that. And even though he was older, you were still confronting him. You didn't, you didn't care. Oh, I didn't care. Part. Man, from listen. Day one? Bro. From we, day one. I, I knew for sure Rick Fox, my teammates, they all thought I was absolutely crazy the day me and Shaq got in a fist fight. After that day, they were like, okay, Kobe, you're certifiable. Uh, <laughs> fist fight. Oh, yeah. Fist oh, fight. I'm not backing down. Listen, either you're going to whoop my ass or I'm gonna, we're going to have a night. But, you know, <laughs> hey, no. Wait, <laughs> you know, it, it, there's a there's a level of respect, and, and for Shaq too, by the way. And that, I know he he's told me that that day was a big turning point for him because it was like you know he's generally used to talking trash and saying what he wants, and nobody really stepping up and challenging him on that. And when he saw me challenge him on that, he was like, "This kid's crazy." All right, I can win with that, you know, and so that. It's kind of the beginning of our relationship, I think. That's probably never happened to him. That's probably not something that's common to him. No. It, it, I mean, he's also, seven feet tall since he was three years old or something, right? It was all, <laughs> this is all coming back to me right now. It was also a game in Phoenix. My first year we were playing, and uh, he kept posting up. But they kept fouling him, so he kept going to the free throw line and kept missing him. And so he throw the ball out to me. I'm not throwing that back in there. Right? So I kept shooting him, right? So we get in the timeout. He's like, hey, hey, uh, hey, I'm open. I'm like, okay. And so we go out and same thing. Come, hey, 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 I'm open. Okay. There you go. Come back in. Hey, dude, you got to throw me the ball. I said, man, f*** that. Get it off the rebound if I miss, bro. <laughs> you told him this. First year. 18 years old, man. 18 years old. <laughs> And I must have been out of my damn mind. The story continues. The story continues. So if you fail on Monday, the only way it's a failure on Monday is if you decide to not progress from that. Right? So that so to me, that's why failure is non-existent. Because, you know, if I fail today, I, okay, I'm gonna learn something from that failure and I'm gonna try again on Tuesday. Those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey.